Hey everyone, my name is Colton and I'm with POSGuys.com. Uh, it seems like everybody nowadays is having a little bit of trouble getting some electronic parts and the point of sale industry is no exception. And with that, it seems that we have people calling us all the time saying that they can't find the printer or the touchscreen or the scanner that they're looking for. Uh, so today we wanted to pull together a quick little video and a quick little blog post, uh, kind of going over some recommended alternatives, things you might be able to swap out the um, your scanners or your printers for. Uh, it's usually there's an alternative for what you're looking for. You just gotta know what to be looking for on that. Um, we, as mentioned, we have a blog post uh, which you can find the link in the description below. Uh, that kind of goes into a little more detail. And of course, if you are a little unsure uh, about a substitution, definitely give us a call. Uh, our sales engineers can help you get sorted out, answer your questions, and get you pointed in the right direction. So without further ado, uh, let's start off with some receipt printers. Um, so we're gonna start off here with uh, going over a couple different receipt printer options. Receipt printers can be a little bit tricky uh, to swap out, but if you know the right things to look for, they're not that bad. Uh, first off, you're gonna wanna make sure that you know what kind of interface type you need, whether you're gonna need uh, like USB, ethernet, Bluetooth. Sometimes your software requires a particular interface, so you wanna make sure you're lining that up right. Second, you're gonna wanna make sure you know whether you need a, a thermal printer or an impact printer. Uh, again, thermal printers use you know, heat sensitive paper, an impact printer uses ribbon. That's pretty important, so you wanna make sure you're getting that right. Uh, and third off, you're gonna wanna make sure that your software uh, is supporting the right printer language. Different printers, different brands have different languages and sometimes they're not all compatible with each other. So uh, if you're ever in doubt, it's always a good idea to call your software vendor. They're gonna be the end all, though it's gonna work with their software. Again, give us a call. We kind of have an idea with some of the larger ones, but if, especially if you're using a little more, uh, a little more boutique software, definitely wanna give them a call. So we'll start off here with the T23 from Epson. Uh, this printer here, it's a pretty affordable printer, pretty popular uh, direct thermal printer. You have a couple options with this. Um, if you are kind of wanted to stick with an Epson printer, you could look at the uh, TMM30. It's a little more expensive, um, but the M30 is right here. It's a little more expensive, but you're gonna get a little more functionality and it prints a little quicker. Um, so you're definitely getting what you pay for there. Uh, another option is gonna be the M10. It's gonna be a little more in line with the price of it, but it is a two inch printer. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your software supports that and that you have the paper for that. Um, finally, you could look at the, I'm gonna cut there because I forgot. Which. Finally, uh, if you wanted to move away from Epson, you could also look at anything in the POSX line. Um, the POSX Ion Thermal 2 is kind of in the same price range. It's similar connectivity options. Uh, and it kind of emulates Epson's printer language, so it should be compatible with most things. Um, again, definitely wanna make sure that you're checking with your software vendor or anything before making that kind of transition. Uh, the next one is another Epson entry. It is the Epson T88VI. Uh, the T88VI is um, Epson's flagship thermal printer. Good reason, it's a really solid printer, and thankfully, it's also relatively easy to swap out. Um, here we have the T88 VI. Another good option if you wanted to stick in the Epson family is the TMM50. It's a pretty new product. It's priced a little cheaper, but it has a lot of the same interface options. Uh, and especially if you're looking for something with wireless connectivity, uh, the M50 is a good bet. If you don't need a wireless option, the POSX uh, Evo High Speed is a really good option. It's a little bit slower, but not by much. Same kind of thing, uh, it's printing just as quickly and uh, it's a pretty solid printer overall. Now we're gonna be moving over into some impact printers. Uh, impact printers, of course, uh, use ribbon and they're commonly most used in kitchens nowadays, but there's some other applications. Uh, the most common impact printer uh, on the Epson side of things is gonna be the TMU220. I actually don't want have one here to show you. They're in such demand, we sold our last demo unit. Um, but if you are in search of an alternative, we do have a couple options. The first option we have is from POSX. It's the um, POSX Impact. Uh, it's going to use the same ribbon, which is nice. So you're not gonna have to swap out and get new ribbon. Uh, and it emulates printer the Epson printer language as well. So swapping out that isn't gonna be too hard. The one caveat though, is if you are using this with like an iPad or something iOS based, 
uh, those have to be programmed directly into the software. So you're a little more restricted there. You'll probably have to go with the U220 if your software only supports the U220. Um, but it's just kind of how these things are sometimes. Uh, if you can't find a POSX printer, another option would be a Bixlon. Uh, again, same thing with the POSX printer. It's going to use the same ribbon. It's going to be able to emulate that language. So it should work fairly similarly. Again, make sure you're checking with your software vendor or give us a call if you're in doubt about that. Uh, moving on to the STAR line, the SP700 is their sort of their flagship impact printer. Uh, again, we don't have one here to show you. We sold that one as well. My gosh, it's been insane. Uh, STAR, the STAR SP700 is a little harder to find a generic version of. Um, they're just not super set up that way. Um, you can, if you do have an older version of the SP700 or an existing SP700 and that's not working, sometimes you can take the interface card out. It's a little thing on the back. It's usually a couple screws. We can give you some, uh, we can help you walk you through how to do that if you're interested. Uh, you can buy, if you can find like a parallel or a serial version or any other version of the SP700, usually you can get that, pull out the old interface card, or sorry, the new interface card, put it in your original one, and vice versa. Uh, that's one way to get around that. Sometimes you can configure another sort of printer, but that's a less surefire way. Uh, and it's definitely gonna require some extra work. Uh, now we're gonna be moving on to probably one of the most popular uh, printers that we sell, the TSP100. I think this is a TSP, there it is. I just pulled the 650 there. Uh, so the TSP100, like as mentioned, is the flagship product. You don't have a ton of latitude with these in some situations. Um, uh, one option you could go for is the TSP 652. It's the big brother to the 100. You're going to look at faster printing speeds. It's a little more of a robust printer. Definitely costs a little more, but you are getting what you pay for if you're moving up on it. Um, one thing to keep in note with the TSP 100 is that it's really popular with uh, iOS and uh, Android, and it's also really popular with online ordering systems. Uh, as kind of mentioned earlier with iOS and Android, they're pretty specific, more so on the iOS side. Um, so if it says that you need a particular printer, you might have to find a TSP 100. Uh, otherwise, uh, with online ordering systems, sort of the same thing, Bluetooth or Bluetooth, Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash, they all require like the TSP 100 Bluetooth. Some of them can get away with ethernet printers uh, and some have Wi-Fi options. It's kind of complicated, so definitely give us a call. We have a blog post um, set up that talks about the different online ordering systems and you can find a link to that in the blog in the description it's really it's really jam-packed this great stuff recommend you check that out uh, next we're going to be moving into some label printers uh, this one's pretty short mainly we're only going to be looking at the zd410 that's been the one that we've been getting the most requests for uh, so the zd410 is a standard two inch wide uh, printer uh, if you aren't able to find the USB only version, which is the version that most people are looking for, you can also look at the USB and ethernet version. We've had a little more luck uh, finding those uh, around and it works basically the same way. You could also look at uh, a healthcare model. We've had some of them that are colored uh, white and they have a really healthcare protective coating. So it's more protective against cleaners. Other than the outside coating works exactly the same. Uh, another thing, if you're going to get a little bit creative, they do have some 300 DPI versions. Uh, DPI dots per inch, basically how, um, how tiny you can print and how clear that'll come out. Um, that can be a little bit hit or miss sometimes. The 300 DPI um, doesn't work on all options. So if your uh, software specifically says that you need a 203 DPI version, your best bet would probably be to move to a wider printer, something like the ZD420 or the ZD220. Uh, both of those are four inch wide printers. Uh, there's some direct thermal options on those as well. Uh, and we've had a lot of luck moving people on over to those. Uh, finally, uh, you could look at the TLP2824. It's the older version of the ZD410. It's still supported and they're still being sold and they're around, uh, you can get them new. Um, it's still a two inch wide printer. It can be a little hit or miss sometimes. Definitely wanna check with your software developer as always, but in a pinch, it'll work as well. Uh, finally, we're gonna go on over to uh, some scanner options. We're gonna make another video uh, later on talking about these because there's a lot you can go into. Um, but 
B quick rule of thumbs with these, if you're using a USB scanner, you can basically swap out with anything, uh, the, any other USB scanner. Just make sure that you're doing uh, a 1D or a 2D scanner. Make sure you know which ones you need because that can trip people up. Uh, we go into it more on the blog post on our website, so check out that and then keep in, ch keep check back on in for uh, the more in-depth video on these later. So that'll wrap up this uh, part of the guide. Again, we'll be doing another one later. Uh, thank you so much for joining or joining us today and listening in. Uh, definitely check out the blog to go in, that talks a little more in depth about some of these options. And if you are in doubt, please, please give us a call. The worst thing you can do is to order something that doesn't work and you get it and you're left stranded when you need it most. So definitely give us a call and we can get you pointed in the right direction. Have a great day, everyone.